Hello there, it is Count Remember, and this is my first episode of Let's Play Roan Turtle War. Of course, I will be playing as the House of Scipio. What is Roan Turtle War for those of you who don't know? Well, it's a turn-based game, and you play as a faction during the time when Rome was uprising, the Roman the Roman factions, the Roman civilization. And it may be worth mentioning that one turn is equal to half a year. And as you see, I haven't fixed with the game, so I can only play the three houses of the Roman families. You have the July family, the Bruti family, and the Scipii family. Julii, maybe it is. Brutii. I don't know. But I'm going to play as the House of Scipio. And I'm not going to read all this history. I can scroll it through slowly so you can pause and read if it interests you. But I can talk a little about it myself. And I've put the campaign difficulty on very hard because I'm kind of used to the game and it becomes a little bit too easy if you don't crank it up a bit. Battle difficulty is still medium because it really cranking that up just makes enemy troops more difficult to flee and that's just gonna make the battles unfair so medium is fine for that so let's start you're gonna have to watch the movie first my family the house of Scipii are beloved of the gods a proud boast but true all the same in return, we have served Rome, ruled well, led her armies to glory. It has cost us dearly, despite the love of the gods. Sometimes the hatred of men is stronger. Our dead lie in many graves, put there by Carthaginian swords and a few Greek ones. Even Roman blades have taken Scipii lives. That we do not forget. Or forgive. So, now our time has come. The spirits of the dead cry out for blood. I will lead our family in this undertaking. The gods will grant us vengeance. When Sicily is Roman, when Carthage is crushed, when the other Roman families are gone, when the world is mine, then I will stand before the gods and be worthy of their love and worthy to rule Rome. Mm. Yeah. Kinda mad? Kinda crazy? Nah. He's cool. He's cool. Okay. Time to start. We'll hang on to that for now. Okay, the first thing you think about is probably the map. I can pan around like this, fancy fancy. And, uh, well, did I mention I'm going to do this, like, basic explain pretty much everything? I won't explain everything right now, I'll just explain the basics, and then other things will come as we proceed through the game. But this is the strategy screen, the map screen, the campaign screen. This is where you manage your settlements and your troop movements, and so on. And as I said, it's a turn-based game, so you can move for a certain amount, then you have to click the next turn, takes you half a year ahead in time, and then you can move again, or manage again, or build again, or whatever you want to do. But yeah, that's a map, you just pan around like this. This is the mini-map down here in the left, down left corner. Uh, you can see which regions belong to which factions, you can see Utrea. It, it tru Etruria, I'm very bad at these Roman names. <laughs> Kind of tricky. You can see which faction they belong to. Currently, they belong to House of July. It's this place here. But so, these are my settlements. And in cities, what do you do in cities? Well, you build buildings, obviously. So, and with the buildings, you can build better troops. And the troops, they are currently here. I have a few troops here. We see this is Hastati. You can right-click to get further information about them. As you can see, they are they have a melee attack and a missile attack. They throw some uh, javelins, and they also have pretty good defense. 
the user missile before charging the cancer. That's a bit of information about them. Then you have a description that's long and tedious to read, so I'm not going to do that. But this move, this army, you can move around as long as these green, this green area suggests. I can move out into this boat, and then this boat can transport me over here, for example, and let off the troops on that shore. So you can quickly transport a lot of units a pretty long distance using fleets. Um, what more? Well, I talked about the minimap, you can zoom in a bit as well. And on this side here, this is the faction summary window. Uh, here you can check really a bit of everything. I will talk about it more when I, when it's in my interest to do so, when I'm going to check something. But we'll just leave it like that. And this hourglass is the end turn button. These two buttons, one was building things and the other one is recruiting units and you do that in your settlements. Okay, um, well, I've talked about this. Uh, this is uh, mercenaries. You can recruit them if you want some extra power quickly. It doesn't take a turn to uh, recruit units like it takes here. You can see time to recruit, one turn, one turn, one turn. Later, some units take even two turns. So mercenaries, you can recruit as many as you want, as long as you've got money currently, I can only recruit one anyway, but yeah. So about the generals, they have command, the command stat, they have management stat, and they have influence stat. Influence stat. The more they have, the more stars, the more paper scrolls, the more olive branches, <laughs> um, the better they are at it. And uh, 0 is the worst and 10 is the best. And then they also give a little comment how good it is. This man has a basic talent for command, although he sometimes lacks confidence. Yeah, let's talk a little about the management. An underachieving oyster would show more signs of being able to manage the day to day, day affairs of an empire. With that said, he is a complete fool at managing. Managing gives you extra money. Command gives you better control of the troops, makes them flee later, makes the auto resolve stronger on your behalf, and things like that. Influence, um, I think for a general, I think that is how easily he can be bribed or convinced to do something he doesn't. You don't want him to do, and um, oh, influence also makes your popularity with the senate bigger. What is popularity with the senate good for? Well, they give you certain privileges. You can check the how popular you are with the Senate right here at the Senate floor, and you start out with six of ten, so it's kind of it's kind of good. And uh, with the people, the popularity with the people, it starts out as bad, and you need a lot of support from the people. I think you need like five, six, or something, if you want to be able to attack other Roman families, because currently you're in alliance with them. That is why they are revealing the fog of war. We can see what they see. I also have trade rights and map access, uh, military access and map information. So yeah, I think that's about it. I need uh, that's what I need to start with. Well, I can take a quick talk about this left side as well. Here, info boxes will come down every after every ended turn with information how the, the turn that just passed turned out, um, if any settlements have been taken, besieged, if you have recruited any new tubes, troops, built any new buildings, anything will pop up there and you will read it and get the information. Currently I clicked that away accidentally, but it said I had to take the city of Syracuse, which is a Greek city down here, and that I would be greatly rewarded for doing so. Well, let's see how greatly rewarded I get. But now I need to gather some troops. As you can see, they they have a general, their faction here actually, and then they have six troops, some hoplites, some militia hoplites, some archers, and some peltasts. And what do we have in our army? We have one Hastati unit, one Roman arch unit, one Velite unit, and our general, which also has units and general bodyguards. You can also recruit units here from mercenary as I said earlier and we also have some units in here which I'm going to send out pretty soon to take Syracuse and I also think I'm going to send this general with his troop down there also going to send this one along simply click on him right click on the army send him in now I'm gonna sit them on the boats 
and the boat is going to be sent down here. It will probably take one room, one turn too much, but I can wait a turn, I believe. So I'm going to recruit a diplomat just to talk a bit with the Greek, with the Greek people. I am um, going to send out some of these Hastati units. Now we have a pretty strong army. I am not going to take any mercenaries yet because they are kind of expensive. So with that, I've started recruiting a diplomat and diplomats well you can simply talk with other factions you can make alliances you can break alliances you can get trade rights map information military access you can bribe people you can pay people to do something special they can do a lot of different things you have to negotiate and they cannot be killed by other armies they are like free from that this is a spy oh the graphic is horrible i'll put it down just to be able to record a bit easier and you can simply spy about them and see what troops in we have. We can go in here, it's completely safe. And I get to see exactly how many units they have and it, the unit's exact stats. Also can check what the what the uh, general, what his traits and uh, what his ritual is. Yes. But that's not much of my interest. I knew they had full units anyway. They always do at the start of uh, a game. I'm gonna check up here, what do we have there? We have the Carthagian city in the western part of that of that island, that huge fucking island, fucking Sicily. But oh well, we have started building a diplomat down there. We are also going to build a building. And for the rest of the uh, city screen, this is the income. This is public order. It is okay as long as it is above seventy-five percent. If it goes any lower than that, the little face here will become red and there may be a riot which can lead to them destroying the citizens destroying buildings killing soldiers and if you're really unlucky they can even take the city and make it a rebel city but it is currently at 135 percent so there's no problem there's a population population growth and below it's the population required for the next level of settlement and uh, different levels of settlements allow different levels of buildings and higher levels on buildings typically allow for better troops, uh, better farming output, better roads, better shrines to the gods and so on. Better traders, better ports. Um, but we have a lot of buildings to build anyway so we won't be needing the further upgrades of them. The first thing also um, the um, this is the tax rate and I'm going to put that up to very high because the public order is still fine. The public growth, uh, population growth do go down but that's not a main problem. I gain some extra money so it is very much worth it. Now I am going to start establishing trade with uh, myself and the other Roman families. So I'm going to build a port. Sea trade is usually the most money generating and I'm going to do the same thing here. We're also going to crank up, we cannot crank up to very high, but we can keep it at a high tax rate. Because if we crank up to very high, it will get very, people get very ha unhappy and there might be a right. And I do not want that. So well, we have this here, we have this here, we have a few troops here. And we have this one with a few extra troops coming in shortly. We are going to move up to the Greek city and we are not yet going to engage because I want these troops as well, minimize losses. So yeah, I have not moved this one yet and since I already have all the things I want with the Roman factions, I might as well go talk to all the other factions. The Gauls, for example, which are the main rivals of the House of July. The Greeks are the main enemy of uh, the House of Bruti, and I have enemies both in the Greeks and in Carthagian. So uh, yeah, that's how it starts. I've moved all my units, managed all my agent builds, stuff that I want in every city. You don't always have to build soldiers, because building soldiers takes from your population, obviously. Uh, 4, 6, 40, and if I remove it again, 4, 6, 4 80. So uh, you don't always want to do it because it drags down the population. Less population means less taxes and also uh, more troops means higher upkeep. With that, I am done. 
next time. The Greeks want to talk to me. They offer me trade rights. I absolutely accept, but I also want to have math information against... Hmm. No, I do not have that in interest. So they wanted me to give them some money before they accepted trade rights. Uh, map information, I mean, giving me map information. So here came some info boxes, end of the turn report. Simply tells me how much I've earned last round or lost. Tells me from which sources this money came. Most comes from taxes, as you can see, but also some from farming. And I'm going to make sure some more comes from trade some corruption and other <laughs> but the main expenditure is army upkeep wages recruitment and construction we are done with that agent recruited the diplomat I recruited is ready to go and since the Greek cities already came and talked to me let me go over and talk to Carthagians didn't quite reach it, but we'll probably reach next turn. Let's check where their fucking army is, meanwhile. Because I do believe they have... There we go, you. And they are kind of potential. They have their faction leader, which contains a lot of units. We're gonna spy on him, just to make sure... Just to check how many units he has. 68, that's a lot of... That's a faction leader, after all. 65 years old. <laughs> it's kind of fucked up. Still out in the fight, no problem. Got round shield cavalry, it's absolutely okay units. Elephants, dangerous as fuck. Iberian, Iberian infantry, very basic units, I can beat them with my Hastati. Uh, Blairic slingers, extremely dangerous. And Numidian mercenaries, extremely annoying. They just ride away from you and throw javelins at the same time, that's, that's a bitch to fight against. Oh well, we are now going to disembark our troops. Let's see how much movement you can do. Um, and I am also going to recruit a few mercenary hoplites just to make this siege a little easier. So, we have a strong army. The Greeks does not. So we are going to besiege them. We are going to attack a neutral faction, no problem. It's about time we go to war with them anyway. You will before later. It's kind of inevitable. <laughs> and this is the siege screen. You can build Rams, ladders, siege towers, and sap points. Because this is a stone wall. If it would have been just a wooden wall, then it wouldn't have been interesting building siege towers and saps. But you can always build rams and ladders, that's always interesting. But now we can build everything. Siege towers because the walls are really high, you can you can charge them with siege towers. But oh well, we are going to build a ram. We are also going to build a siege tower and two ladders so we can take it already the next turn okay and they also have some more units there town militia is very crappy and have poor morale but they still have a lot of troops that is not nice gonna move that fleet away and yeah they are still building the port there and a port there Mm. Okay, I can't yet build a stati, but I have pretty many troops anyway, so I am fine to the most part. I'm gonna send these up to talk with the ghouls. Um, yes, like that. And yes, war. Duh! I want to check one thing. So here we hop into the Senate, here you can see what the Senate thinks of different factions, of you, and your missions. Um, here you can see what they they think of different... Uh, uh, but different factions. And they think all different about all, I'm not gonna talk about all that. The mission and the Senate floor... Ah, I'm disliked by the people. Wham! That's not good. Okay, 
here are my enemies, my allies, and other factions, enemies and allies. Currently, it's only me who has gone to war because uh, you always have the first turn, so you always have the opportunity to do such stuff first. But else than that, I think we are actually done with this turn as well. Let us move on to the next turn. And these SPQR people, they really like dividing their armies up for some absolutely insane reason. End of the turn report, went a little minus again. Construction report, the ports are done, which means I'll be getting a lot more trade. And also, if you go to war with any faction, pretty much always all the other Roman factions will do so too. Call it good, call it bad, that's how it goes. Now the Greeks have all the Roman factions against them. But now, we can actually take this city as we have rams and siege towers prepared. Now I'm hearing a strange sound in my earphones, but uh, well, I hope it's okay anyway. Hope you didn't hear it or hope you don't mind it. Um, next thing we could build, we got a lot more trade income now. Um, trader. We can see the trade income goes up by a good amount, and also the population growth goes up. Here you can shed a bit, shit, shit a bit. You can check a bit, uh, a bit of everything really. So it's a it's a good screen for managing your settlement, seeing how much plus you get, and similar things. So a trade was interesting, gave me a lot of extra trade income and also some extra public uh, pop population growth, paved roads gives me even more trade income, so I'm actually gonna go with that. I'm not very interested in building troops here, so that's why I'm in Capua, so I'm um, mainly gonna fo focus on troop buildings here. And I think I'm actually gonna build militia barracks to get some Hastati against, in the war against the Carthagians. Because that may be tricky, they have a lot of troops. And they have moved away. I do not quite know where they are now, if they're fighting the Greek people, hard to know. We are kind of lowing, 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 running low on money, but that shouldn't be a problem as soon as we've taken this city. We can recruit these, but I'm not going to do that, instead I'm going to go into assault mode, or I'm going to attack them for fuck's sake. And well, this is the battle screen. I can right click to see my troops and my general, and I can right click to show their general and their troops. This is the balance, I'm currently having a great overhand. And this little skull and sword above his head, that means this army cannot free from the battle. If it loses, all units will be destroyed, so if it's a draw, I will still win. It is probably because they are close in there and they have the win this each. But they have no chance, I have a great chance to take them down, and you can choose between automatically resolving it, because the fight on the battle map can take some time, or fighting on the battle map. And I'm going to fight on the battle map just to show you how it works. Later I will resolve the easier battles with auto resolve and the more bigger and difficult battles on the battle map. So, you zoom in a bit like that loading screen and oh, that was some time ago I did this let's see if I can still manage the controls I've mostly played medieval total war 2 lately um, it's a it's another total war game and it is actually a better game than this it is more advanced oh uh, more advanced you think the omens are so numerous and so in our favor that I cannot describe them all and still have time for a battle today. Over there stands the Greek army. And the general holds a little speech, but I'm not gonna wait and listen to that because it is dull as crap. And you can see here, this is the battle, this is the area, this is everything fancy fancy fancy. Down here in the left screen, this you have a lot of use for. You can check around, this is the area you can develop your, you can put out your troops on, this within this blue area. And here are my troops, lined up nicely. Um, 
you can look look down here, uh, middle, bottom. This unit has attached is attached to a siege tower. This unit is attached to a ram. This is attached to ladders. Both of these units. But I do not want my Hisati troops to be attached to the ram because they are gonna take a lot of beating. I'm going to unequip them. You're gonna move away, and instead you. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. Don't lie to me. They were in the phalanx formation. That's a very defensive formation. They can't run in it, and they can't have any siege equipment in it. But they are a fucking wall when they're in their position. So they are going to use the ram. I'm much more willing to sacrifice them than any Hestati unit, as uh, they are just mercenaries. They are very expensive to have uh, paying the upkeep for anyway. And this siege tower is going to head straight for that wall over there. Uh, this ladder. Ooh, let's see, do I even want to do that advanced things? Possibly in front of the... possibly take that wall. Yep, I'm gonna have to move up there. And this one, I'm just gonna let go of the ladder because, well, it doesn't really matter. Also going to change... no, let's never mind that, it's not that important. So we have a few, few free troops and they are going to move in behind here. Because they can be used to push into the city once the ram has broken through the gate. Some velites, not very important for me right now. Some archers, can be interesting, can move up here behind them, they have long range so there's no problem. And then I have my two general troops and they are just simply going to move along here and encourage my troops to keep fighting. Press start a battle and it starts gonna tell them to take the gate, gonna tell them to move up along and now I'm gonna take the rest of my troops and just tell them to tag along. There we go, now we can speed up the game a bit so you don't have to watch it all. And by now, yes, now these towers are starting to shoot at me. They are defensive towers, they will shoot fire arrows at the rams, and they will shoot regular arrows at my troops. So you see, I've lost two hoplites, that's not too bad. Nobody gives a crap about two hoplites anyway, that's not a major loss. My units keep heading towards the walls, the siege tower, the ladders, the ram, and my troops behind are prepared. You can move up a little more even. Good. Oh no! They started. They ram. The ram is flaming. That is very bad. I will now have to go up the ladders instead and up the siege tower, which means, unfortunately, that I will lose some more troops. This is a step on the path to victory. The but the siege tower is on walls. the wall. They have hoplites prepared up there, but they won't be very good. Without their swords, without their phalanx formation, up. and my uh, archers are now shooting at the hoplites, or maybe they have it activated. That is like cheating. They have phalanx formation even though they are they are at the walls. That, that kind of feels like cheating. Okay, you are now shooting at my hastati troops. That is not very good. I would much more like. You shot at my mercenary hoplites, so I'm gonna move them back up there, hope they shoot at them. I'm gonna put the hoplites behind there. And I'm actually, actually, never mind that. Move over there. Keep shooting at the... Keep shooting at the hoplites up there. They are moving along for some reason. They have decided the threat is bigger over here, as my Hastati troops are starting to climb the ladders. And for some reason, they only want to go up to the three main ladders. This game is a bit buggy, you're gonna have to live with that, but, uh, well, it's good nonetheless. I'm still losing some troops down here, although it is not too bad. You can run a bit. And you are taking fire from, well, one of the towers, I guess. The Hoplites have lost 5 troops from my archery fire. And my Hastati units are starting to come up here. Rather many of them. 
you can also stop moving up there. See if they understand what I told them to. Uh, you've also lost some troops. But you seem to be turning around now. Yeah, buggy, buggy, buggy. Buggy game sometimes. But most of the time it is good and works pretty nicely. And they are still losing some troops. I'm shooting them in the sights with my uh, Roman archers. And you are gonna have to move over. Should I by the way now? Let's wait a little more and the the siege this block will come down and they will be able to rush out this little bridge. And they have gotten into a fight with the hoplites over here. But my troops are generally much stronger in normal melee than them. As you can see they are losing. I'm winning, or actually it's kind of fair. But uh, I have much more troops, so I will win in the long run by pretty much. Okay, they have opened the gates, and some of my troops are starting to come out. A lot of them are, however, still climbing the ladders, taking its time. But they are all starting to get up there. Uh, you are still losing some troops. You can move back here, and you can move back here. Let's see. And we have taken the gateway, which means that they will no longer shoot at us. Although I doubt that I can walk through it. Can I? Perhaps? Can I? It seems so. It seems now that I've taken it, I can walk through it. And that is just what I'm going to do. They are no longer shooting at me. And I can walk straight through. Okay. You can attack these hoplites in the back. They are trying to flee now. Which won't be good for them. They are fighting to the death, that's a correct that's a correct thing. I'm now stabbing them in the back, and they lose a horrible amount of troops. They fall down the walls. They get absolutely crushed in between my two Hastati troops. Let's see for the rest of their troops that are in this, in the heart of the city. Can't look into there just yet because I'm not close enough. But we are finalizing, finally crushing the last hoplites in between our Hastati troops. One after another, they fall. You can see, um, you can see they are fighting. You can see they're broken. You can see they are warmed up. That's how um, warmed up. That's how tired they are. The best is fresh, and the worst is it's exhausted, eager. That's how um, happy they are. How content with the battle they are. If they are more towards uh, winded, uh, no, not winded, but uh, uh, it goes from eager, uh, steady shaken and broken oh, no wavering and then broken and uh, broken obviously being the worst one because then they flee you can't control them while they flee they just run away like little pussies and this general this general bodyguard has decided he wants to take a little trip out to the left here to smell the flowers or whatever what they have in here is a bunch of general bodyguards, which will be very tough to kill. I will stand from a distance and and uh, shoot some uh, arrows at them. And this is militia hoplites. They are like the hoplites I battle at the walls, only weaker. But now, I will line up my general bodyguards here, just to make sure this bitch here doesn't walk away like some fool. And then. These guys are trying, all trying to get down at the same time. That's the wrong one. And that's the right one. You will all line up here. Just to make sure I get some order into this shit. 
Um, then let's see how am I gonna execute this. I think I'll move around with a few troops. You are gonna move up like my main force through here because you have excellent you have excellent um, you're excellent when you have the phalanx formation you're gonna walk over there uh, my velites you can pretty much just stand around here I'm not gonna have any use for you and now I'm gonna triple speed it just to get the units in order you're gonna have to hang along to such things when I just triple speed it let's see you are getting shot at that is not good it's cool again I think it's this tower that shoots at me. So I changed my mind. I'm not going to do some advanced plan where I just move around with all my troops. Let's see if you can get your space down or else this is going to be a disaster. Yes, that's what I'm going to do that. And they will be excellent units against the their, uh, their horsemen. Crank down the speed a bit um, and let us move in with the two general bodyguards. Actually, let's take this one first. Move up there. Be a bit tricky. Okay. But now. You must move up there. double time it and these move with their space down that's why it goes a bit slow but that is on the other hand very powerful when they charge let's see this that's messy probably lost some troops but that the general surely did too and their militia hoplites are starting to move in and I am losing a lot of hoplites so you are going to aid them I may be losing a lot of hoplites, but that is not the end of the well, on the other hand. Keep the phalanx formation steady. They are shaken and unhappy overtaking, overtaking casualties, but now they get lifted up. Their spirits get lifted up by the general's encouragement, and we are now starting to push through with our Hastati units. You can move up over here to flank the uh, militia hoplites. Actually, no, you decided to attack the general's bodyguard instead, which seemed to go as well because they are losing very, very badly now. However, we must make sure that, that these militia hoplites do not crush us because that's a possible scenario. These spares are very, very, very dangerous. Let's make sure some of you move around. Ah, oh, they don't want to. They all just want to shard straight in. And that can lead to a lot of casualties, unfortunately. But I seem to be breaking their formation. Their general died. The enemy general is killed. Fear makes a home in our enemy's hearts. Yes, now their, now their formation is broken and they are quickly losing most of their numbers. Now we're gonna double speed this because the battle is as good as one. They're all going down at a very rapid pace. There goes the last few and we have one. I thought, haven't we? Ah, oh, there's one left. Hey, what you doing, man? He's glitching. <laughs> I just love these kind of things. <laughs> He's glitched out. Okay. Also, you get those nurses on the side. Yes, the battle won. Lost some troops, but that was unavoidable as they had a pretty tight defense. And these towers kind of shot at my troops. I was a bit unlucky with the general bodyguard, but I lost mostly militia hoplites, which really isn't any shame in the world because I don't give a crap about them. 
Okay, I won. And also I forgot to mention that another way of winning than uh, killing all enemy units or making them all flee is by holding the center of the city for three minutes. At least that's when you take a city. On open field battles, it's simply to make enemies flee to win. And you can now that you've taken it, you can choose to occupy it, which is simply take take over the government. You simply become the governing faction. You can enslave it. You, I wouldn't say you kill some uh, some people, but you send them out as slaves to the sorry to the other settlements you have. And this will get you some extra public growth. This typically also gives you some extra denarii, but in this case it didn't. Well, whatever. Or you can exterminate the popul population, and um, well, then you only save like a few hundred. And this is usually good when, if if say I take a um, a city that is really far away from my capital, there will become a very big public disorder because I'm far away from the capital and it the people are supporting the previous government and if you kill the if you kill most of the population then and raise the city one more time but with your rules with your laws then you won't have at all as much public disorder so but in this case it's kind of close to the, my capital so there won't be a lot of disorder because of that I will simply occupy it and you can see Ratuin expands. Veteran Centurion. This is um, a person that is in my general's company. And he will help out with various things. This one helps out with personal security. And gives me one plus command when commanding infantry. Excellent. And the Senate mission was successful. I have been given 5,000 denarius, a very welcome gift or reward, as I was kind of low on money. But now in Syracuse, we shall of course build some sort of building. We can check here, is it worth it building shipwright? Will give me almost 100 more per turn. Very much worth it. Trader? Not so much worth it. Communal farming? Hmm, that's like plus, plus 70, maybe worth it. We will click that away um, for now. Normal tax rate works fine. They are not as unhappy as it being likely to them making a right. So normal tax rate is fine. But I think they may get unhappier by time as I leave my garrison um, with my garrison, so I, I'm actually gonna build a shrine to one of the gods and the shrines to the gods it makes the population happier as they know the gods are pleased and uh, different shrines also have different uh, benefits this one, Shrine to Vulcan, he is the god of war or the smith god by the way um, Neptune is the god of the sea, I'm reading straight off here and Neptune is, well, from the planet obviously um, well, that was the wrong one. The Saturn was the uh, god of time and father of Jupiter. And they all do different things. This gives me better weapons. This gives me simply more public happiness. And this is growth bonus. No, I can't see it right now, but if we check the building browser, we can see what it does later on. I was Neptune. Yep. Uh, later on, really much later on, it will give me ability to build really really epic ships Tesser and Corvus Quinquirine they are absolutely amazing and you will win every naval battle with them but it isn't very interesting in other ways so I will take this one instead Shrine of Saturn to make the population really happy with me ruling them it's a good way of bringing public order to a newly captured city and now I actually have two generals there, which means I can leave one general and move out with the other one, which is this one. He is the best at commanding, so he will be the one I move out with. Now I have three settlements. Fancy fancy. Let's see. Can I, be of I think I want to talk to you. I shall speak to Trade rights. Uh, 
and I assume these people will not be fair with that. No. No, I do not find that interesting. But trade rights is always good. It will give you tradeability with them. Tradeability. Now, if they have any ports or any city that is connected to yours, you will start trading with them. So it's a good way of getting money or making sure that you get money when, where it's possible to make money. And do we need any more troops? Possibly we actually do that. We want the Shrine of Saturn, but then we're going to have to build militia barracks to retrain some troops. Retraining troops, troops takes zero turn, it is written, and that means that you can rec uh, retrain an infinite amount of troops in uh, just one turn. But we are going to merge some of these units together to get uh, less weak ones. See. Now that one is a lot weaker, but that means we only have to retrain one unit. And mercenary hoplites. I'm gonna disband you for now. I don't really need you that much. But it did a good work. And that actually made the public order go down, so it wasn't really worth it. But I don't think about that. You can't think about everything. Hey, hey, hey. So let's see. Was, is the Senate more happy with me? No, they're not. Bitches, still. Ah. Oh well. Now, it is kind of important to get on good foot with the people if you want to overthrow the Roman Empire, the other Roman families, later in the game. But that is, as mentioned, later. Still, you, first you want to take Sicily as uh, the House of Skippy, and then you want to go to North Africa. Of course, you want to take Kors as well, uh, but then, well... They don't have that many means of expanding down south, because these land areas down here, they are vast, but they don't have many settlements. It's quite the opposite for House of July and uh, House of Brutu. They have so many pl places they can go and take settlements. But I am kind of in a more relaxed spot. I get Sicily, and I get this, but then... Then you'll have to wait and see what you can find. And now it's perhaps it's time to fuck off with me. Come on, fraps. Oh well. We built that. We're gonna wait around and see how happy the citizens are next turn. By the way, I'm... No, I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm thinking about uh, tearing down some uh, Greek structures because having Greek structures but a Roman government gives you a culture penalty and that is bad for the public order. Also, having newly taken a settlement, the population isn't happy because they've changed government um, and you have a lot of unrest okay okay and okay oh and this is also good to have as a trait on your generals 5% bonus on your popularity with this senate and I think you get more of that by building academies. We can find that. Uh, uh, academies. Scriptorian Ludus Magna. They give your young generals because uh, you get young generals by time. As your slightly older generals, they get a wife and they get kids. And when those kids grow up, if they are males, that is, by the age of 16, I think, they go out and become generals that you can command over. Yes, master. Because it would have been a shame if you only had, like, this guy, this guy, and these two guys for the rest of the fucking game. No. Of course, you take in other people, found new family members from other, other factions, and, of course, you grow, or grow, you raise young boys to become generals, Wait, and the boys being this guy, for example, son. Okay, I think we're done. You have not done anything this turn, but I have talked about you. No, I have not. Let's take trade rights, ask for map information. I assume you won't agree. No, fuck that. 2000, never in my life. I still can't find where they're... Where they're 
Maybe they have moved. Yeah, they've moved along on the fleet, which makes the uh, capital very badly defended. Not the capital, but this city. And uh, it will make an easy target for me. So, uh, yeah. And I'm also going to build some town watch because they are not very strong. Two troops on one hand, three, se three, one, seven, attack, charge, defense. Starting eight to fifteen, as you can see. But they are good for keeping the order, and they are sheep. You can compare 150, 100 in upkeep, 440, 170 in upkeep, and they are the same amount of troops. So yeah, I think we are done there. We don't need this fleet, but I'm not gonna disband it. That would be cheating. No, but everybody needs a fleet before or late. So end that turn. You can see House of July messing about with the the Gaul settlements up there. Uh, okay, a new mission from the Senate: Take Settlement Lilibium. It is located here. Not very surprising. You will be rewarded with a unit of Triari. Triari. I'm not sure if you say that that way but <laughs> I say it that way and Triarii they are amazing troops Hastati they are the jungles I'll talk a little about Roman military right now the Hastati are the jungles soldiers in a Roman army they are like the first line of attack they are very energetic but they don't have much experience they are the weakest troops, but yet they are strong. The Roman military is a very potential power. Next comes the what's it called? Principales. Princip. Princip. Blah blah blah. Uh, princips. They are the second line. They are a little bit older, a little bit more experienced. They have better attack, better charge, better uh, not not better charge, better missile better missile, better defense, they are more experienced, they are better troops. And then comes the Triarii, and they do not have any throwing weapon, but on the other hand they have a long spear. So Hastati and Principes, they are kind of the same type of units, except Principes are a little better, uh, but Triarii, they are the Roman faction's spearmen, and they are very tough to break through a line in. They also have good attack and a pretty good charge, so they're good all around, and they have good morale. That is another thing to think about. Morale, well, I think it is obviously enough. It makes the units flee easier or more difficult on the battlefield as they lose, as they lose against other units. End of turn, we've gone on plus. That's good. That was because of the huge income from the Senate. We found an agent. In Syracuse, an agent belonging to Carthage, we can see him here, um, but he managed to escape. Sometimes they escape, if you discover them, sometimes you execute them. But uh, at least we know he's there now. I have nothing to hide, he can go there if he wants to. And in Syracuse, we have completed a shrine to Saturn. Excellent. Seem a little happier in here. Good, good. Gonna build militia barracks too, just to get some hoplites up. Although I am actually building that there, so I'm just going to wait with that. Um, and in here we shall instead build... Let's see, what makes them happier? I think... Um, the Temple of Saturn would make them much happier, so I am going to build that one too. I'm kind of focusing on that right now, just to get the settlement, the population happy, and then I can move out with my troops. Culture penalty is slightly lower now, which is excellent. Hmm. I may actually have that interest more. Mm, doesn't bring that much trade. But maybe that. What? It doesn't give me any trade at all. Well, I think that's just a, that's just wrong. But when I upgrade it, it will go away as a Greek structure. Instead, it will become a Roman structure. So that will also remove some culture penalty, thus um, uh, making the public order better. And also it will generate me a whole lot of money. <laughs> yes, master. 
So well, let's go check out over here again. I'm just gonna make sure they don't have any, any shit lurking around, backstabbing me. But no, they seem to have actually moved away with their with their army. Thus, it will be easy for me to attack. However, I will first have to take care of this Greek army. Sorry, people, you are going down. And they escaped at once. That's why well, it just disappeared. Uh, they retreated, and I had the victory. Let's see how incredibly unhappy my. They will be very unhappy if I do that. And that will be very hard taken care of. Let's see. I think I'm going to build some more town watch. And we will also see if we can recruit anything. It's just mercenary pelt tests and they are very expensive. But I think I will move back with my Velites. Yeah, that did gave me slightly... I'm going to build this anyway. <laughs> Slightly better public order, but we will have to take down this Greek Greek army to make sure they don't backstab us. And let's see, I'm looking at a clock. I don't want to have too much record time. Ah! Uh, it's been nearly an hour. Let's make it quick, and then let's finish this recording. I hope you've been enjoying it somewhat so far. I know it's been a little rough for me in the beginning here, it's been a bit difficult, I've never done a commentary about something this laid back before. And also explaining all the things, there's a lot of things going on in this game. It takes some time getting used to. But I hope those of you that know about the game, they can, you can enjoy it. Because it's not all complicated. Okay. Let's move up these troops a bit. Start a battle. Okay. They have archers. They have pelletasts. They have militia hoplits. And they also have some regular hoplits. And they are moving against me at rapid pace. They are not yet able to shoot, but I think that will change soon. I think. No, they do not play a skirmish type of warfare. Because if they did, they would simply walk forth with their archers and shoot me and then run back as I was charging them. It's a really annoying tactic, but it works good as fuck. So we are going to focus my uh, archers on the opposing army's archers. And now stopping to shoot. Fire in the hole. They're losing a lot of troops. And my troops are typically much stronger than their troops. They are getting shot and they decide to fall back a bit. I'm gonna move up with my Roman general up this flank. I'm gonna move up that flank. Like that. Now we take all the Astati units and move forth. Like that. Sorry for screaming. <laughs> units forward, units forward, units forward! And you are just keeping on firing on the archers. That is excellent. They are pesky fucking troops to deal with. And you are closing into the Pelotas over here, so you are actually gonna get to charge them. Okay, pause. Uh, you can... Oh, I want all my Hastati troops to move forth a little bit further like that let's see these can also throw space I've already mentioned that and these are extremely easy troops they are horrible in close quarter combat close quarter combat they are horribly up close using melee weapons 
and they will quickly rout as they are terrible at fighting cavalry, they don't have any space, cavalry simply run them down. You seem to be losing some troops, that is not a problem. Let's see, you knew. Oh wait, let's actually take all these and equip. You can reach them, you should move up a little bit just so you can reach the troops. And you can actually move up a little bit too, and you should move up a little bit there. And you can move up over here. See? On pause. You are starting to throw spears on these guys. They lose a lot of troops because spears are nasty things to have thrown at you. You are too throwing spears. simply throwing shit all over them and they lose a lot of troop which is very successful and good for me. And you have just ran down the last units so you can move back over here. You are slightly warmed up, you are ready to fight still Units, move out. and they are now routing as I have as I have hurt them a bit too much I've hurt their feelings actually you can just move up a bit like that they're even starting to rout now that I have very much pummeled their troops I'm gonna shoot a bit at their hoplites as that is their general troop and that is gonna take a while to get down I've spent all my see they're being fired at, they lose a few troops, but the Hey well, who's charging who? What are you talking about? What was that noise? Okay. Lose some more. Excellent. Now we're gonna have to face a spear well, but I'm hopefully going to be able to crush them. The yep, I have absolutely away. crushed them this in between no my armies. Now we are going to strike down their archers, the and on the general too. And now he's made Excellent. And I've won the battle. But I'm gonna continue hunting them down because, uh, well, that's obviously gonna make it a bit better if they lose as many troops as I just can. Make them lose. Let's see, it's gone about an hour now. So you killed the last fucking guy there. Good job. I'll take them down. You can stop. Just this sad, sad, sad troop of militia hoplites left, and I'm just gonna hunt them down. There we go. Rome demands victory from her generals, and this day is clearly our victory. A very, very, very clear victory. Not many troops lost at all. GG. Victory! Sir, now you are gonna move back there, 
Let's see, still very unhappy. Well, that's unfortunate, but I actually think I can quit that one. <laughs> that's not like the fourth time I'm shaking my, changing my mind on that. Um, but yeah. Okay, we may need some more troops. Um, gonna crank that up to very high. Gonna send out my Hastati units over here. Gonna merge the armies. Uh, that's still working out. Okay, I have a pretty decent force to take the Debeum, and I'm going to do that. But I'm also going to end this episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. This was a bit slow. I am going to try and play faster. I'm not going to play all battles on the battle map, and I won't be going through the basics next time. So all the time won't be spent as they were spent this time. But I hope you enjoyed. Let's save it as. Let's fuck. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, house of Skippy. Hey, kind of went smiley. As you die. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now. No, <laughs> sorry. And um, adios. <laughs>